Welcome to another Rooster Talk, uh, where we talk with ASX companies um, and their MDs and the CEOs about you know updating the, on the business itself. Um, I've got uh, Sprintex Limited here today with Jay Upton. Uh, he's going to be giving us a uh, sort of a discussion update on their recent announcement. Um, so, Jay, welcome back uh, to Rooster Talk. Well, you were with coffee with Santa. Thank you, thank you Noel. It's a, I must say, it's a beautiful spot to be this morning. It's a lovely spring morning in, in uh, Perth. And in some ways, I think it's actually springtime for Sprintax too. Well, that rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you put out an announcement, um, well, today. Yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a movement in the right direction, I guess, in, from what Absolutely, point. yeah. It, it's part of our expansion. As you know, we announced back in June that we were um, opening a, a new facility in China, which was to focus on the clean energy sector and, and uh, perhaps particularly on hydrogen fuel cell compressors, but additionally, uh, mainly electric compressors, really. I mean, Spintex has been a compressor company since it started. So for us, it's, it's kind of a natural progression, a natural expansion into um, electric compressors and as part of that, compressors for clean energy because that's the direction the market is going. You know, we, we feel we must keep up with the times and, and keep moving. Yeah, I mean, just to recall, obviously, you guys make compressors for sort of, you know, cars to improve their um, power. Correct. Yeah. So I guess uh, 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 sort of a, the way to go is obviously now we're moving to hydrogen cars, electric cars. And, Absolutely. And the the yeah, car so, market's changing too. So would that be the focus for Sprintex? I know that we, we discussed previously about uh, how the compressor is not just for cars, right? It's for Correct. Yes. Yeah, so we, we've always um, supported medical applications, emergency air. For instance, the, the Maralinga cleanup in South Australia from, from that uh, nuclear contamination, they used our compressors to, to pressurise the operator's cabins to, to keep the radioactive dust out. So because it's clean, breathable air. So along the way, we've had all kinds of, of smaller applications uh, that used our, our compressor as a clean air compressor. It just for us at the time that the low hanging fruit was was the automotive industry and, and supercharging regular internal combustion engines and as the market moves and changes we move and change with it so electrifying our compressors and this possibly started about three four years ago we were working with one of the largest diesel engine manufacturers in china um, on trying to assist them with their transient response on city trucks and buses. So that project showed us very clearly from a technical standpoint, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm from the engineering side and I'm, I'm very much part of that. Um, it showed us very clearly that we needed an electric drive compressor to be successful in that application. And We've been looking for how were we going to do that, and now we found the opportunity. We, we partnered with a UK high technology company that specialises in high power density electric motors, so they can make a smaller electric motor that goes faster than than a typical industrial electric motor, and that's what we need to make our compressor work at, at its highest efficiency. So this announcement really is about the fact that we've signed a collaboration with Aristec in the UK um, and we feel that, that it's the synergies between the two companies are fantastic. They've been making electric compressors but they're not compressor people, they're electric motor people. We're compressor people so it's a perfect fit almost that, that we can improve their compressor side they can help us with the electric drive side. And from that, you'll see us build e-superchargers, because obviously we build superchargers, so we're looking at that op opportunity. We bring that electric drive in into both aftermarket supercharging and OEM for, um, for improvement of exhaust emissions and improvement of transient response, even in industrial vehicles and trucks and buses. 
Um, but also you will see us, as we build those electric compressors, we'll start to look at the other things. And really it's what the market is bringing to us. We, we have industry coming to us looking for wastewater aeration. That, in the past, a lot of wastewater just went out into the ocean. Well, now we're looking at how you know, every aspect of the community is looking at how can we recycle. You know, we, we have the recycling bins at our houses now, which we didn't have 10 years ago. So in every aspect, I think the world is looking to tread lighter on this planet and, and to reuse some of the things that we've made and find a, a better way to do that. So. <clears throat> Wastewater treatment um, is quite a big market and I think it will be going forward because they need aeration and, and it's a natural thing, our compressors are ideal for that. So largely I, I think you know, where we're going now is we're just expanding what we do. We're becoming a, a broader uh, high-tech compressor company than we were a year or two ago. From uh, an investor point of view, looking at your market, because this is not quite something that people see a lot on, on the ASX especially, uh, plucking figures that are realistic or ballpark, how would you say the percentage of this market opens up for you guys by doing this collaboration? It's a multiple. It's, it's not a percentage. It's a multiple. So our market will be multiples larger than it was okay. you know, without doubt we, we can see every day um, new companies coming out with hydrogen powered vehicles some of the bigger OEMs Toyota looking very hard at it Mercedes already have fuel cell powered vehicles mm -hmm. um, locally here here in Perth we're seeing even the resource business you know Fortescue Metals Group have recently founded Fortescue Future Industries and they already have fuel cell coaches taking their people to work on, on the mines up in Christmas Creek and and I saw just in the last two days I saw a prototype of a big 250 tonne mining haul truck using hydrogen fuel cell com <coughs> as its as its main energy source yeah. so I think we're going to see all kinds of new applications come to us you know we are an Australian company and obviously we're going going to try and be involved in Australian projects resources is, as we know Australia basically relies on resources to to fund the, con the country mm. so for us it's natural to be a part of that too. Is um, Are you guys more aligned towards the hydrogen fuel cell business or the electric vehicle business? Well, both, they're, they're one and the same. Many people don't understand that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are actually electric vehicles. So very similar to a plug-in vehicle, rather than only having a battery, it's like having a compressor, uh, sorry, a generating set on board. So the hydrogen fuel cell stack is an, an electricity generator with no moving parts. The only moving part in it is the compressor. So that's another reason why we're trying to make more efficient, quieter, faster compressors because electric vehicles, as we know, are very quiet and we don't want to spoil that. If you know what I mean, you, you don't want to hear a howling compressor all the time. So, so no more big exhaust. Exactly. So <clears throat> um, as I say, largely a lot of people don't understand that a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle and an electric vehicle are the same thing. You still use electric motors to drive the car. It's just a different way to provide the electricity, not just a big battery. Obviously there is a battery and we still recover energy on the um, overrun and braking cycles in the same way that current electric vehicles do. Uh, it just allows extended range compared to a regular plug-in hybrid, uh, plug-in electric vehicle. Okay, okay. And, um, you know, go, going forward, like, obviously you guys are now signed this agreement and you're going to move forward. And I know we, you, we talked recently about your production in uh, Malaysia has just restarted, uh, had a hiatus due to COVID. 
Absolutely, and as I was saying, it, spring, it's a beautiful spring day today, and, and in many ways it's spring for Sprintax as well. It's just in the last week we've been able to reopen our Malaysia factory to 100% operation. Been closed uh, for three months over COVID, unfortunately, but um, COVID is, is a fact of life. We, we have to deal with it. We have to be responsible and look after our people, <clears throat> just as every company does and every government and, and every community does. So we've been doing that and, and I'm very happy to say that, that we are able to now um, restart operations in Malaysia. As part of the recapitalisation as we spoke earlier in the year, we bought the other 50% of that operation from our um, Tier 1 Malaysian manufacturing partner. So that's now 100% Spentax owned facility. It, that allows some more expansion on, on the conventional compressor side. We mainly make twin screw compressors in Malaysia, which, which is yeah, the name Sprintax is synonymous with twin screw compressors. But as part of the um, change to electric drive, we, we will make electric drive twin screw compressors, but we will also make electric drive turbine compressors. So, yeah, I, I think it's a, <coughs> it's a fantastic time for Sprintax. We, you know, we're coming out of COVID and we as Sprintex are coming out of, of a kind of a doldrums period and we're ready to move ahead and, and build some real value for our shareholders. Okay, well fantastic. Um, look, I guess, you know, the, the, the simple question is, you know, to, to close off, um, going forward, what's any news flows, what's the, what's the projected news flow? Um, well, we, we're working on some other things. I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to tell you about that. But you can tell us everything. We, right? <laughs> we, we're working um, based on, on the fact that we are starting to build um, electric motors and a motor and a generator very similar. We, we're working on a, um, a turbine generator for aviation, which I, I think you'll see something come out about that before too long. Um, we're probably going to see some advances as I've said before you know out of a project we did three or four years ago it became obvious to us that we had to have electric drive uh, compressors to help with supercharging of city trucks and buses for me that, that that's a huge market you know the, the one company we were dealing with in Asia just one model engine they sell 400,000 units a year you know and this this component that we're developing at the moment, the electric drive supercharger, if you like, is it's not applicable to one brand or one one model engine. It's applicable to every brand, and it's, it can be scaled in size to suit different size engines. You know, that, that original project was around a seven-liter bus engine. Well. Currently, we're working with an OEM on a 20-litre engine for e-supercharger for long-distance uh, line haul trucks. So I think you're going to see some news coming in that square pretty quickly because, it, for mine, that's, that's probably closer than hydrogen fuel cell. We're, we're going to make hydrogen fuel cells. Lots of people are making them. Everybody's trying to do that, you know, but it... It takes time to change, and when we look at industrial vehicles, off-road mining vehicles, um, highway trucks, that sort of thing, they need to be reliable. They need to use technology that we know and understand. So it's going to take time to transition across in, into the likes of hydrogen fuel cell trucks. But in the interim, there are some fantastic opportunities for us with e-supercharger of industrial engines. And, and the market for that is immense. It's, it's far bigger than any market we've tackled before. And, and by building this factory um, in China, we've also brought China into our sales market. I mean, you know, it's not that we manufacture in China to sell to the rest of the world. We actually manufacture in China to sell to China. And people possibly don't, don't realise that you know, China has advanced so quickly over the last 15 to 20 years. Um, it's becoming a, a much larger consumer market, and in terms of size, you know, the population is 
four times the US population or double the entire population of Northern Europe. And if you think about that in market terms, that, that provides a huge market. And without doubt, I think China is, is pushing very hard on the environmental side. You know, 10, 15 years ago, China was, was suffering with the Industrial Revolution, just like the UK did at the turn of the century. All the buildings were black. You know, well, that, that doesn't happen anymore. Today, we, we're trying to clean up industry in every regard, and China is probably working harder at that than anybody else's. They're, they're leading the way in many ways. So we're finding <coughs> that there's many, many good resources for us and uh, many, many opportunities in the marketplace to, to help clean up the environment. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, I think, you know, Sprintex gives me um, a, a different look at how we can invest in this sector. We're sort of used to the, you know, the raw materials, the commodities, and then we, whereas, you know, you're looking at applications now, real applications, like you're in the engine now, and then, um, and, and electric engines of, you know, aviation or, or, or the seafaring or the land, the trucks and things like that. Um, your market is, is quite big. It's know? a big market. Yeah. You know, and people don't realise just how big it is. Yeah. And by making that transition to be more relevant with the, with the industry as it's changing, it puts us in the box seat to, to be part of that. Yeah. You know, and I, I think in, in some ways, some people have asked me, are, are you changing direction? And, and I tell them, no, we're not changing direction, we, we're expanding and we have to make new products. Technology evolves and changes, so we wouldn't be serving our shareholders at all if, if we weren't making changes and looking at the market and seeing what can we build that's relevant to the market, that helps the industry and builds value for our shareholders. We, you know, we just wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't do that. Well, you know, it's a good, it's, it's a good announcement it's in, the, in, the, in the right direction. Absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. It's taken a little while to, to put that to bed, <coughs> uh, but we've got it done now. Uh, the guys at Aerostech, we're having technical meetings with them every week now, on Zoom of course, because of COVID. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that, it's part of the new normal and yeah. in technology has gotten much better. You know, if you, it's another analogy, if you like, if you look at 20 years ago, we, we had horrible scratchy phone calls that dropped out then, and you couldn't really have a meeting um, over the phone or online. But today, you know, it's the new normal. We do it every day, it's, it's several times a day. You just have to look at the amount of um, you know, YouTube videos that are done on and Zoom. Exactly. You know, um, pe people you know, scrolling the phone all day. Yeah, that, when I was a boy, we didn't have mobile phones. It didn't exist. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jay, um, for Thank the update, you. and let, let's continue to follow your journey. Absolutely. Well, if something happens, we'll let you know. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. It's, it's happening, though. It's definitely happening. Great. I've been down the wrong road, and I've been all alone. Drinking whiskey at the bottle, honey, trying to drown all these sorrows.